No, I'm actually off Friday. You want to do the Comic Core? Yeah, we can. the hunt? Yeah. We, we Dad do sent me a text asking me to come on, and I was like, yeah. I go, just so long as, you know, don't mind if, like, I'm, because I, I was like, I don't always know what time I'm getting off work, because I couldn't remember what time it started. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Just whenever you can, get on. And he's like, you think Tony would want to do it? I was like, I don't know. I could ask him. So he's like, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm actually off that day. So, yeah, I can actually make an appearance on the Comic Core if they need me on there. Cool. So, hey, what is up, Comic Lover Omega? <laughs> yeah, we're see. This is what you like. Bro talk is just me and Jeffrey talking. <laughs> we are talking literally in the, in the chat. We are literally talking, just hanging out, just like yeah. just doing nothing. So uh, it was new comic book day today, and uh, a lot of stuffs happened. Uh, the Spider Man trailer dropped, and we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to talk about our, our stuff that we picked up on new comic book day, and uh, and I'm I'm starting to convince myself that uh, I'm actually turning into a Flash fanatic. <laughs> I, 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 you ever just realize that? Like, you never realize like you like a character until like you sit back and think about it. Because I watched the, the CW Flash show. So I watched the show. Me and my son loved the show. Uh, I binge watched, uh, like I quit watching it for like a year, but I binge watched and caught all the way back up to current right now. And uh, yeah, and so, and then like I bought that, that one Flash, uh, the one, fl uh, well, this book right here, yeah. I bought this, uh, this Flash book right here, which is an iconic cover right there. It's actually. Uh -huh. This is actually this is like the only like one of the few books that's like a, a three key like it's uh the first silver age or golden age green lantern in the silver age uh first mention of earth two and uh so like there's the first shades i guess of the like the multiverse or whatever and uh we'll be talking about multiverses later on intent but uh later on uh -huh. <laughs> so what is up i see uh Chad, MF, Chad, what up, Chad, congratulations to Chad on uh, uh, joining the cult of being uh, married and uh, collecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not part of it, so I wouldn't know about it. But well, Comic Lover Omega, what's up, buddy? It's Comic Sam. Good to see you, man. So yeah, we're we're running kind of on the late tip tonight because we were just like. I he was he, he <laughs> Jeffrey fell asleep on me. I was like, I was like Jeffrey, Jeffrey. I was like, hey. then I was like, I was like, I know he's not mad at me because I was like, uh, we weren't even arguing or nothing. So nah. I was like, he, I was like, he had to have fallen asleep. So I was just like, I messaged him one more time. <laughs> yeah, yes, I did. I got home from work today, and I've got a call from my bank. Somebody was like, had my access to like my freaking debit card. Taking money out of my account. Man, that's crazy. That this yeah, goes on. I know. Uh, luckily, they caught it, so I just had to cancel that card. And I guess I'm waiting on another one, but it was for like some like little four dollar and sixty three cents charge from Washington D.C. or something like that. So I, I didn't do anything. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. That's like uh, my wife had a deal where like they had a uh, they had took a a penny like they I don't know what they like they took a penny out and then put the penny back in. I guess they were testing to see if they could get in you know access to the money or something or see whatever. Right. And uh her bank like stopped all transactions and stuff and so Yeah well uh, that's how I found out is I, I went to deposit my check from work and they were like uh wrong pin number. I'm like wrong pin number I was like nah I didn't forget my pin number so that's when, like, I had to call down there, and they're like, "Yeah, somebody charged, put a ch weird charge on your account, and we didn't recognize it." I was like, "Yeah, no, that wasn't me. The last one I did was a comic book. <laughs> the comic books for me, but not that." Yeah, no. that's like, uh, that's crazy though. It's like, yeah, so like the the thing with the cards, and and then plus, like, you know, because we're always buying stuff online so you know as collectors we buy stuff online so it's like we put our information out there daily yeah that, you know and like real. and like I, that's why i kind of like paypal and then like uh i like buying stuff from guys from instagram in the community that i feel more safe buying from like i have like i've bought numerous times from alex the comic quarter 
good dude. I trust that guy, uh, Big E's, uh, Jeff Johnson, any of them guys in New York. Uh, you know, and it's like. Yeah, PayPal is probably the way to go. Yeah, PayPal. And uh, my buddy, uh, Black House Comics, like him, dude, like any, like PayPal, like kudos. <laughs> But like I've never had like I've been fortunate enough never to have like I've had close calls where I thought I've had to you know like do the PayPal where you get the reimbursement thing and stuff but yeah not really though so. I I have through eBay when I sold some things or have bought some things that were never arrived yeah there is hey nice comic Sam yeah um. Mine, I don't know if you can tell, but way up there by itself, up at the very top, is my Shazam number one. So that's a nice, <laughs> nice book to get. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Oh, you put it way up there, huh? Yeah, I can see it. There it is. I, I was running out of space, man. Like, I didn't know exactly where to put it, but it kind of gets cut off. So Might have taken down one of them storms. All right. Dang. <laughs> I don't know how I can sleep at night. <laughs> so uh, I picked up this book today from New Comic Book Day. And I got to show like a few of these, like those, I guess those, uh, when it was the free books or whatever. Oh, yeah. Did you just get those today? Well, no. I, I, my shop actually still had some and gave me a couple today when I went in. So I was like, yeah. Like the play, like the, I didn't go to my buddy's shop. He doesn't do new books. He does like vintage old books and you know like stuff like that key books and stuff like that so i have like two other shops that i go to and like this one shop i go to th there's what i call a vulture and what i mean when i say vulture and i don't mean like <laughs> but like this is what i mean like this and people are like what are you talking about what i mean is there's a guy and i'm not saying it's every guy that works in the shop but there's a guy that's a knowledgeable guy like one of us you know that, that knows his and that's his job i understand that but there's this this guy in this store that I go to that when the, there's this other, like this, all right, there's this customer that comes in there and he's this, this like a, a recluse kind of guy. And he's like, a, he's an older gentleman. And uh, I've talked to him like three times. And the it's going to be me, like, Tony. Yeah, the three, <laughs> he actually has glasses, Jeffrey. And he rides a bike and stuff and it's kind of funny. And it's like, uh, but the guy has like this killer collection that he brings to the store, and it's a, it's like a second chance. That's where I got the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the Blue Marble, the first appearance of Blue Marble. I got it from that store, and it was like, uh, real cheap. I sent it to Reggie. I forgot. Reggie and White Lost. It was like, like four bucks or something like that. But it's like a hundred dollar book. But anyway, this vulture works inside the store, and this guy that that brings his collection up there and like you know gives it off, or like sells it off to him and stuff for like either for money or stuff that he needs. Like he'll sell it off to him, and then like they get this collection, and it's got keys in it, and it's got like stuff in it. What are you doing, Jeffrey? I was typing in the chat. <laughs> you were like beating on your keyboard over there. Oh, sorry, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> but anyway, so so anyway, the guy that brings his collection up there it has keys in it it has like you know stuff that's because i've seen him bring it up there one time and they had like you know uh the first uh appearance of tarantula and spider-man and some other stuff that were like minor keys but there were still keys in the books so the vulture guy that works in the store what he does is he'll go through the whole collection pick out all the good stuff put it aside for himself <laughs> don't don't put it out for you because know, i went to look for the I went to look for the tarantula appearance. I was like, I was like, I want to buy that, you know, because the dude seen me looking at it and he knew that he had it. And like, you know, so when I went to go, you know, I, I'm talking to the guy that had the collection. But so he sold, you know, he he, agreed, he made his deal happen or whatever. And I'm talking to the guy about the Spider-Man, the first appearance of, you know, tarantula or whatever. So anyway, long story short, they make the deal happen. And then so like whenever he goes to put the books out or whatever. I go look for the, you know, the one and it's not out there. And I'm like, you know, Hey, what's up with the, you know, the first appearance trend. Oh, I'm buying that, you know, uh, that's, you know, and I'm like, well, well, what about, you know, this other book that I was going, well, I'm getting that too. Cause it's not my, I don't have it. And I'm just like, bro, really? Like I can't get no keys. I can't, I, you know, I, it's like bad. Like, you know, and this, and, and this, 
the the girl that runs the place like, like the girl that runs the place she's cool but when she's gone this vulture's there and it's like the dude, and it's like he's knowledgeable and it's like you know he knows and he knows i know he knows and we both know and we're sitting there looking at each other and i'm like you know and, and it's like dude why are you why are you like that like you know can you know it's like your job is to like sell stuff so like that store i just go to to get like new stuff so Long story short, I go there to get like sometimes they'll have like variants that the, the other store I go to might not have, but if they have them, it's because he doesn't know yet on the up current, you know, like what variants popping off or whatever. But he knows his keys and stuff like that. So anyway, um, the <laughs> that, that was kind of a rant. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's cool. That's what this is for. And, you know, that reminds me like. I don't, I don't know if I would say necessarily a vulture, but there's definitely somebody else who goes to my shop who is on the same wavelength as me. Because I'll go into my shop and I'll see a book there and I'll be thinking about it and I'll be thinking about it and I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to wait a couple of days, save up some money, and then I'll come back and get it. And then I'll go back and I'll either get it or it'll be gone. And then like the next time I'll show up, as the uh, owner, Dave, he'll be like, man... He goes, somebody came in like 30 minutes after you looking for that book. And I'll be like, dang, lucky I got it. Or it'll be the opposite. And I'll be like, oh, you sold that book? He's like, oh, yeah, man, somebody came in like 30 minutes ago and bought that book. And I'm just like, that guy, Jeffrey, man. Jeffrey, it's probably you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I bought the, uh, the new uh, DC... Uh, well, it's not new, but it's the Flash 70. We're starting to retell the origin. And I have to say, I like the artwork is very impressive in here. Uh, I just like the artwork in it. Who's the artist? It is. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Let's say. Let me see here. It doesn't really start the story. So. I don't even know who the artist is. It's not even say front. Wait, uh, wait. It's either Williamson or Porter, whoever that is. But all I know is like, whoever the artist is, it's like, and then the storytelling is pretty good. Cause look, like, look how they do like the how he runs. Like, I kind of like that. The story was actually good. And then like, how he burns up his shoes and stuff, and he's. So it's kind of like the uh, actual the show and stuff. Like you know, the show is kind of accurate to the book, and the book is like accurate to the show. It's kind of cool. I've never even seen that show either. Is it pretty good? It's on what? It's on a streaming network, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's on a. You can get it on streaming. I think it's on what like like Netflix. It was on Netflix. I think. I don't is that know what it is? On there. But yeah, it's pretty good. But like. This is actually a good story, like a good retelling. Uh, the art's good in it. And then it's like, uh, oh, wait, wait. I'm going to spoil it for everybody. Check this out, though. Check out Barry in the future. Because you know Barry Allen be messing up the timelines. So this he meets himself in the future. This is the, the Barry that just became the Flash meets the future Barry. Huh. So that's kind of a spoiler first. <laughs> so that's like a... This was on the uh, CBSR report, I think, for this right here, the battle for the this appearance or whatever. Uh, is that like some first appearance, I guess, of yeah, Future Barry? Barry? Yeah, Future Barry or something like that. So that's supposed to be some kind of first appearance, but it looks pretty cool. The artwork, like I said, is pretty good in this book. So, if you yeah, you know, I've I've been pretty impressed with all of DC's artwork. They're covers too, man. Like they just do two, and I like that. Like they just get, you know, A, B. If you don't like either one of them, yeah, no, for sure. I like that too. Um, I think that's a good idea. And this was—I didn't get the—I couldn't find the the other cover, so this is the one that I got. This is this one, this cover right here. Oh, that's cool though. But yeah, and me and Jeffrey both got the uh, Outsiders. Yep. Cause sure did. I remember reading this as a kid. Like I remember reading this because this was like, oh, I usually had a copy of it laying around somewhere. It's like an old school copy. Yeah, you know, I did a show last night with um, Comic Head eighty four and Chad ninety, 
and uh, we did it on Detective Comics Batman, and they mm -hmm. were t they were talking about this one coming out, and uh, I don't know, I, I don't know a whole lot about DC or any of these characters, but they were they kept talking about them because they knew all kinds of stuff about them all. So it kind of interested me to um, pick this up and uh, give it a try. Yeah, I like uh, Black Lightning. The TV shows, yeah, it's all right. But uh, I like Black Lightning. Definitely love uh, Katana. Katana's a cool character. That chick right there. Yeah, she looks pretty. Uh, pretty and it's a, and it's a, a sweet Tyler Kirkham cover too. Right? It is. It is. You know that I think that A cover is probably better than the variant cover. But yeah. I, I did get the variant cover too. And see, we were talking about this last time on Bro Talk because I was doing the same dilemma. I was like, ah. Oh. And then I was like, I was like Tyler Kirkham. I'll just get Tyler Kirkham. <laughs> yeah, and my thing was I only had two books that I was getting this week on my pull list, so I was like, you know what? If it's that big of a deal where I'm torn between the two, I might as well just get it. Yeah. And then I got the uh, what is this one? What's up, D Rock? I guess this is like a first, but nobody ever talked about it. So let me see. Hold on a second. I didn't know you get to read it because I had it like just put away. But that's kind of cool though. And I do have the first appearance of this guy anyway. So but this is also supposed to be a first appearance too. Which what is it? Uh <laughs> Well, what book are you talking about? Captain Canuck. Oh, that's so, a free comic book day? Yeah, a free comic book day, Captain Canuck, and uh, it's supposed to be a appearance of uh, I guess the new Captain Connect. Kind of, I guess like kind of like a play on a uh, Captain America, you know how like Sam Wilson and Bucky, so it's like I guess like a you know right. like who's gonna be there. So uh what issue of Captain America is that three oh eight or something, three twenty four or something like that? Oh I got it. It's in one yeah. of my boxes. I got it somewhere. I just uh, I'm not gonna claim to know the exact number. <laughs> yeah, I don't so yeah, this is supposed to be like a, a first appearance. So a lot of people didn't pick this up, but I did because it's eh, can I give Canada a shot? <laughs> hey, what's up, D Run? And then uh, I don't care what nobody says, man. Ed McGinnis, man. Ed McGinnis, Arthur Adams, but Ed McGinnis for sure. Like I. You had to get this free code, this free comic book right here. The oh yeah, I still, I, I'm actually reading. It was like scoping through that exact one right this. Second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the one that I got. I got this one, and then I got. I only got two, but I got. I don't know this. I don't know what is the cat woman's tail or something. It's a. It's a small book, but yeah. So I went to buy my books this today, and my he uh, the shop owner is like, "Hey, you weren't in here on Saturday, were you?" I was like. Nah, I got caught at work all day, didn't get a chance to make it down here. He's like, well, I got a couple books left. He goes, let me get them for you. So he gave me those. Ah, like, oh, yeah, that's tight. What's up, DS Comics? <laughs> but this Avengers looks pretty sweet. It's got an idea. Yeah. But through it, I saw, like, the Red Hulk, and then I saw the story about Wolverine, so. Yeah, I like it. looks like there's a Venom story in it. I mean. And now they've added a Blade to the team now. Oh, yeah, Elektra. Yeah, but in one of the panels, it looks like there's a jar that's got venom bottled up in it. It's got the third eye of Agamotto. So, all right, looks pretty good. Okay, I did. I did actually. What's up, NYC? I did actually get a Marvel book, Jeffrey. And uh, hey, what's up? It was, uh, I did yeah. too. I guess if you want to count that free comic book one. Well, no, I got another one. I did pick this one up. It was a, uh, I guess because it's the last issue of a uh, Spider-Man Deadpool fifty, and the, I just kind of like the cover of it when I seen it. So I was like, cool, kind of a cool cover. Oh yeah. And, like uh, they're just sitting there, and Spider-Man's like, uh, my spider senses is tingling, and uh, Deadpool's like, come on, webs, we made it to issue fifty. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> that's so, funny yeah, I, I haven't read that series at all it's supposed to be something about I guess because I think it's the last issue or something like that something about this oh. book too but, so I bought that because I wanted to read it anyway because like, I just like to cover anyway anything with a 
Gotcha. Picture of death on it's kind of cool. So uh, this one I got for my son, and but I'm reading them too because like the. This is my son's little reader pile right here. Nice. Like So he has all his stuff just stashed over here that he reads. And, uh, I'll show you what he's reading right now. Uh, he's, did you read that one, Kavi, that um, Spider-Man Deadpool? No, I haven't read it yet. I was going to read it later. I, I read The Flash, and uh, I was reading Outsiders before I got on here. And I got to read this because uh, my son, he loves Shazam, so... You know what? I it's on issue is that issue five right there? Yeah, it's on five. Yeah, this is five right now. Yeah. I was that's the variant. Yeah, I was wondering. I, look, look here, here's here's four. <laughs> this is how dedicated my son is. And then uh, let me see where is it at. He's got four, three, and then. Uh, this is number two. He has that one. He makes me buy all these. And I buy them because he wants them. And we have like five number ones. Like five of these. I, yeah. got the, I got the New York variant. I got the Chicago C2E2 variant. I got uh, another variant. Like, I don't know if it's a different variant. It is. But yeah, that's, this is my son's. That, But this, like if you've never read this story though, like I read this because he made me buy it. But I read this because I was just like, Kind of nostalgic, but uh, yeah, Injustice versus Masters of the Universe. Ah, oh, yeah. yes, I have that. That is sick, bro. Yeah, dude, like, that why is issue sick. one? There's two, six of them, this figure, right? Three, <laughs> four is right here. That's a sweet cover, right there, old. dude. Let me tell you, the art in that comic book is, yeah. Dude, out of yeah. this world, like cover to cover, every page. Yeah. Is I mean, look at, awesome. look at, look at, like right there, like uh, he's got the power of Shazam, basically. He, yeah, no, nah, he does. Yeah. He, he gets this. This Shazam gives him the suit. Yeah, yeah. But he's got fight black Superman or whatever you want to call him. He's like dark Superman or something. I don't know what. It, I yeah, what to call him, and so like that yeah. is a sweet, but that I, that I, I you know. I, that was that series came out like right when I got back into collecting, you know. Um, probably what like uh, I don't know October something like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, maybe a little before that, but I it, like issue one came out, and I was like, yeah, you know what, it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna give it a shot, and I I was glad that I did um, because it was a good read. Um, the story was awesome, and the art. It, just killer art. They came out with it. The, I think the trade paperback of that too. So, you, if you want to pick it up like that, but I think it's worth it either way. All right, JP, catch you later, bro. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, um, we weren't we weren't supposed to be out late. We were supposed to do it early, but Jeffrey fell asleep. I did. I was I, I was watching TV and I passed out, man, straight up. So uh, another free comic book that I got. I guess this. I, I think this is the first appearance. Uh, Source Point Press. Uh, that Hope book or whatever. Huh. We're talking about this on uh, what was it? CBSR or something like that. Something Never like, heard of that one. Hope or whatever. But about that. Well, I got that for free or whatever. And yeah, yeah, like see when I went to go the the free comic book day, like I went in like thinking that you know you can get one of each or whatever. So I'm grabbing like one of each and then like the vulture. He informs me. Oh, you can only have three. That was it. That's all they were letting you take was three, huh? Yeah, yeah, three. So I was like, only three. So I was like, okay. So I had to pick, you know, what three I wanted. So you know, because he ruled the roost, I guess, or whatever. So I didn't care. So yeah. So those are the. Hey Sam, good to see you, man. Hey Sam. So those are the uh, free books that I got. And those are some of the books I got for New Comic Book Day. Well, I and, uh, yeah, um, I didn't get much. I got a lot of the same. Um, I ended up getting a couple free comic book books today. I got this Catwoman one. I was showing that it's it's pretty. It's like an ash can. Um, then that Avengers one, and it looks pretty cool. I want to check that out. Yeah. And then I went to get my pool list, and all that was on my pool list was. Wonder Woman issue number seventy, and um, Batman Detective Comics, which is good. 
Um, it's introducing the Arkham Knight. Yeah, like I, it says, I, I didn't know who it was. I didn't get to see because I didn't get the book. Yeah, well, um, I haven't read that issue yet, but um, issue 1002, I guess he reveals who he is. It doesn't show it in that issue. It's just like a shot from the back. And um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm interested in reading that later tonight. But um, is it, it's kind of his first appearance, kind of not. Apparently, it's like his first appearance in continuity because he was in a, a GameStop exclusive when one of the games came out because he was a video game character for Arkham Asylum or something like that. Yeah. And um, he, he was in one of the GameStop exclusive comic books that came out. But this is like his first appearance in continuity or something. So I don't know. But it's been a good series. I've, I've enjoyed that. And since I only had two books on my pool list and I got there and they still had couple of these this is a wonder woman um 70 jenny prison variant really like her stuff so i picked that up and then um, i picked up the batman outsiders issue number one try to give that a try and i got the variant for that too so <laughs> that was my pickup yeah man i don't know like i was looking at this one and i was like yeah that's pretty sweet and then like this was right there next to it like this and i was like man that's pretty sweet too like I know, that's what it's you know, doing like, to me. I'm not going to lie, there were a lot of good variants out this week. There was a like a Red Hood and the Outlaws one that I almost got. There was like a Justice League society. Oh, speaking of Red Hood and the Outlaws, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... No, you're good. Uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws, there is a deceased cover coming out, a uh, deceased number two, and it's got Red Hood, like, uh, and he's beating the Joker with a bloody, like a bloody uh, crowbar. And he's like over him, so it's a deceased cover. And you go look at uh, I don't know where I seen it at, but like I was gonna order it, and I was like I backed out of the order because I ordered the uh, the uh, new uh, uh, black cat, the black cat coming out. That the reminds art, me that also, the art germ. Have you seen the art germ black cat? No, I, I can only imagine. Dude, it's good. He's good. I love art germ, but um. That Batman Who Laughs, number five, that had a super nice cover. Um, uh, I don't know. There, there were a few books, but I was just like, you know what? I can't, I can't do them all. Um, so I got the two I really wanted. Yeah. So oh, I, yeah. But if he's, did you see the Art Germ one, though? Okay. Uh, Looking at it right now. That's pretty sweet. I ordered. I ordered the. Uh, see the trick. All right. So the deal is all right. So I don't know. I'm gonna let everybody in on this because, like, whenever you go on eBay, they got like the uh, the the Virgin variant going for like 250 bucks right now. And I'm not lying. I showed this to t uh, to two uh, to two last night. I said I said to her, I was like up late, and I was uh, and I'm always looking for stuff. So I was up late and uh. I seen that and I was like, man, that's kind of you know crazy for a, a, a you know like it, it reminded me of the uh, the Spider Ghost or Spider Gwen book or whatever you know. And then like the uh, Alex Ross, the Detective One Thousand, and then uh, so I was looking at that and I was like, man, it's like you know two fifty just for this version variant. So I went on Midtown, and on Midtown they have pre orders of the where you can order it slab for I think eighty nine or something like that. And I should have done that, but I ended up getting the one where it's just like the Virgin sign for like, I think it was like 37 bucks or something like that. Oh, no. So do not go spend $250. Yeah. <laughs> go to Midtown and get it for like 40 bucks. Dude. That, also, that Catwoman 11 art germ variant cover was sweet today. Like, yes, yeah, so I didn't even see one because everybody bought them or the Vulture took them. Yeah, no, there were a few at my shop. I was surprised they had quite a bit of books in still today. But yeah. I, I, you know, a guy could get crazy going on, on all those. So, matter of fact, I will show you the actual like because I literally sent this to two. Like, if you're one of those people who likes to buy all the variants, boy, today would have been a busy day for you. I mean. I almost got caught up in it today, like literally going like, in there and looking cool. at it. All. Like, like it, look, this is what I'm talking about. See, look, yeah, if you can see it. Look, if you can really see, you, you see can't. It, 
Is it Falcons, sir? Yeah, no, it's all blurry, blurry, bro. Blurry. Hold on, wait. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. See, like, and this is from Midtown, so it's kind of nice. So, do not spend too. I'm I'm not trying to knock anybody's hustle, but I'm trying to help people in the community. Like, don't go spend crazy money. Do your research first before you go out and spend money. Like, I never buy any. You know, I never buy anything unless I check around first. Yeah, no, for sure that you got to. Um, I think that's one of the best things to do when you're buying pretty much any book, because I mean we've all made that mistake before, I'm sure, right? You buy it one place and you go see it half price somewhere else or something. Yep, and it's just like yeah, buyers regret and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I seen that squirrel girl. Uh, the uh, what's the the battle? Of the was it the battle? Of what they call it? The, I didn't even hear of it. Oh, uh, you know the what's it the battle variants or whatever they call them? But oh, the, battle line. Yeah, battle lines. That's it. Yeah, battle line. Well, they had the squirrel girl one, and I seen it, and I was like, I oh, it looks all right. <laughs> you know, I was like, it didn't look bad, you know. All right. But it's just like I don't know, squirrel girl. I don't know. And shouts out to uh, <laughs> my boy Hulk Nuts. <laughs> huh. uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh man. Huh. Sorry to hear that, Mr. Gerald. Yeah. So, hey, how about that freaking new Spider Man Far From Home trailer? Bro. Yes, yes, the trailer. We were gonna bust that out because, like, I know. Man. I just look. I just looked at a picture of that Squirrel Girl um, book, and it had a picture of Mysterio underneath it. I was like, oh yeah, that Spider Man trailer. That was sick. Man, yeah, that's gonna be good. They have opened the doors to parallel or different dimensions or the multiverse or whatever you want to call it, but they've opened the door for it. If you haven't seen the trailer. Too late. Spoilers. Blah blah blah. <laughs> I mean, you should have seen it by now. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you so haven't, go check it out because it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, and I'm kind of glad, like, because like at first, like my kids thought, like I heard, like that the Far From Home was supposed to be like a, a prequel to Endgame or whatever. But thank God it's not. It's afterwards, and then it's. Uh, I like I like the uh, the 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 banter between him and Happy. Like him and Happy makes me. Uh, Kind of, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like, it kind of makes me feel like they're gonna push Spider Man to be like the new kind of leader in the MCU. You know, kind of like Tony Tony Stark, Iron Man, kind of was like he was. You know, we all know Captain America is probably the leader, but you know. like Tony Stark was kind of the head honcho. You know, tech guy. You know, that's kind of what. Okay, this 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 it's just a trailer. I know, but this trailer kind of made me feel like. You know, they might be trying to do that with Spider Man now that, you know, Endgame has come and gone. Well, I believe he gets Friday, doesn't he? He gets the rope, the, the AI program, doesn't he? Because it's in his suit and he still has the suit. But what was funny to me was like the, uh, the whole deal where he's like, you know, uh, getting a phone call from Nick Fury and, and Happy's like, you know, <laughs> it's Nick Fury answering. He's like, no, you answer. And he's like, no, you answer it. If you don't answer it, I have to answer it. And then I'm just sitting there, like, dying laughing. Then, like, he just, like, you know, like, sits into, like, you know, gives him the FU button. Yeah, the yeah. FU button. And he's like, you just don't ghost Nick Fury. And he was like, he goes on his trip. And then I was just dying laughing because his buddy was walking in the room. And he's like, hey, da da da. And the dart just goes in his neck and he just falls out. I just started laughing so hard. Yeah. So, for sure. But, okay, so is that the same Mysterio that was always in the comic books because Nick Fury even says he's like from an alternate timeline or something like that. Well, see, that's my whole thing is like, uh, everybody's specking on him being like, kind of like a bad guy. And he's the one creating all this destruction and all this chaos. But if it's a different Mysterio, then you don't know what's going on. Well, and see, that's like a lot of people went out and bought those, uh, was it Hydro man? And, you know, uh, yeah. 
Well, I mean, if you can get the first Sandman, get it. I get it anyway. I wouldn't, even, and even if it was for a movie or not, I'd get the first Sandman. But uh, you know, and they're specking on this being like you know stuff to do with the movie, and it's like really the only ones that I think are gonna like benefit from any purchases made from this movie or whatever, if you want to call speculation purchases, are the people that went and bought the first appearance of Mysterio, and. You know, like, and if you've never seen the story of Mysterio or seen it on, like, the Amazing Spider-Man show back in the 90s or whatever, Mysterio plays to be a hero. He always starts out as, oh, I'm a good guy. I'm a hero. I'm, you know, and then he's, like, shows his true colors, you know. Like, you know. Yeah. So he's supposed to be from this different Earth, which is, like, if they're doing this dimension or, you know, alternate Earths or whatever, it's kind of cool because, like, they've already kind of stepped their foot into it, and I don't like to like give spoilers. But oh, I mean, I, 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 mean, I pretty much figure everybody's team in game, so spoiler alerts right now because if you want to think about it, yeah, whatever, like you, do I mean, a countdown like before you start giving spoilers. Okay, well, like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. What? Okay, spoilers. Okay, spoiler on the end game part because on end game, whenever they went back in time to get the stones, and then you know Thanos found out through you know Nebula or whatever they had the same thing or whatever, same connection or whatever, and he leaves that timeline and goes to Tony Stark's and the Avengers timeline. He leaves a void in his timeline there is no thanos there to cause all the chaos and kill everybody and do whatever because he's gone he's over here in this timeline he's jumped over to another timeline so once he left there's nothing there over there so that's messing with a timeline over there so that makes a parallel dimension where there's no thanos there's no you know you know kind of really no need for the avengers i mean i guess because you would say because he's not even there so there's well, a time and line. also, like, I know it doesn't tie into the MCU, but that Spider-Verse animated series was all about that. So, I mean, they've kind of yeah. slowly introduced it in a couple of ways now. So, who better than to bust it out with than Spider-Man himself? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that was like, uh, so if it is the, the, the thing that they're really going to go with, if it's really true, what he's, you know, that's the story, and they're not going to, like you know, because like, it might just be like a, oh, he's really not from a different dimension. He just said he was, or, you know, so. Yeah, I, I could see that happening, too, because he's apparently, like, he's like a trickster, right? Yeah. Like, kind of, so he could just be lying about that, all that the whole time. Um, and also, we saw that there is a black suit Spider-Man, but it's oh. not like yeah. It, it, it's the like uh, Spider-Man Noir, 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 Noir. Yeah, okay, Noir. It's like the Spider-Man Noir kind of costume, more so than like the black Spider-Man suit. So that was kind of cool. And a lot of people were specking on that, but I think they were specking on it for the the uh, what's you call it, the Spider-Verse movie, but not the actual movie movie. So, yeah. So whoever invested in that. Maybe they're you, getting, you, know, you got you got ahead of the game, so. But know. yeah, no, I I hadn't seen that trailer, and uh, that one is. I mean, the first one had me ready to see it already, but like this one, I don't know. Marvel has just been knocking it out of the park. I feel like with a lot of their movies lately. Oh yeah, yeah, they yeah. have, and uh, I mean like. I just want to know where you know where it's gonna go from there. Like this keeps saying space, and now we have this possible different you know Earths or whatever. Which you know different Earths means you know they could do the uh, Marvel X-Men. zombies. No Mar- oh, yeah. Marvel zombies. They could do Marvel zombies. <laughs> that would be something. They should do some like uh, Halloween Marvel zombies. Marvel what if movies? <laughs> you know I would not be surprised if they did something like that. Uh, I can uh, see those what if movies happening, like uh, some ra- random one shots that didn't they didn't have to stick to the continuous like timeline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That would be a way for them to just go back and do some random one shots. Yeah, that'd be cool. So like the whole yeah like this is gonna be like the uh, the Spider Man and then like the they tweaked the. 
like I didn't know they were gonna do the whole noir costume though. Like when I seen that, I was like, I was like, oh okay, so he's gonna have the noir suit on, you know? Like, well, I guess they'll call it the stealth suit. I guess it's gonna be like a stealth suit. I guess. I had no idea. Yeah, that threw me. Um, I wasn't expecting to see that at all. And uh, yeah, because like it's, I don't know. As soon as you see it, you say noir. You like noir pops in your head. It's the Spider Man noir. It's just maybe it's. Him. What if it's not him? Because if they're doing this whole different universe thing, maybe there's another Spider Man from another universe. They're here at the same time as him. Kind of. Oh, like, that looks like Peter. Yeah, well, kind of like in the Spider Verse cartoon, right? Like the Spider Man Noir guy is from like the 1930s, but look at Jeffrey peeling back the onion. <laughs> well, I did. I mean, is my whole thing is just it's with a trailer that they don't want to give you everything. They don't want to spoil everything. I feel like there's got to be some type of like twist, you know, to twist to it in some way, you know. So I don't know. That just a, a thought. It could be, I guess. Yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah, but that is a good. I never really thought about that, but that that is pretty. You know, yeah, that could be a deal where it is another Spider-Man from a different dimension trying to hunt down Mysterio. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Cause I mean, like the, the 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 monsters that they fight or whatever you want to call them in the movie are pretty big. You know, they're pretty gigantic. So it's like. Maybe he would need another Spider-Man or, you know, maybe, you know, who knows. But that would be kind of a cool deal, a twist or whatever in a plot. Yeah, uh, Mr. Girl, I could see them overdoing it, I guess. But honestly, like, the only movies I even watch are, like, the Marvel superhero movies. So I'm pretty pumped up just about any time they come out with one. I know that they said the end game is, like, Almost the number one grossing movie ever all made. Time. Yeah, all time, all time. I believe it. So it's like it's climbing up there. I'm like, dude, it's gonna because people are going to go. Like people are seeing it like two or three times. Yeah, I've seen it twice. Yeah, and I, I'll probably see it again. Oh yeah, you gotta see it. Like this, this is like like when Infinity War came out. I watched it once, and then it was like I didn't really watch it till like it kind of like came out. Like, no, I did go back. Yeah, I think I did go back and watch it once. I can't remember. I watched it one more time. I did. Yeah, I did watch it twice. I watched it twice. And then, like, I really didn't watch it again until, like, it came out. And then when it came out, like, I watched it, like, you know, how you get, you're at home and you watch it at home. And, yeah. was, and I think that movie's more of, like, on a – actually, both of them are on a, on a downside. But, like, that one at the time to me was, like, the downest one. And then it's, like – Oh, psych! <laughs> you were wrong. Yeah, they were. <laughs> a lot of the Marvel movies try to be the like, you know, like the good guys win everything. Like you know, everybody comes out happy and all this stuff like that. But the Infinity War and Endgame did not like that. See what and what's funny to me is like how they did it was way better than how DC did it, because when DC killed off Superman, you didn't care. You didn't care. Yeah. You're like, that, that's the thing with DC, though. Like, And I feel like they're getting better, because um, like, I haven't seen Shazam yet, but everybody says it's a good movie. Oh, yeah, it's, it's and, really good. Me and you talked about Aquaman. It's probably our favorite DC movie, how we both really liked it. And then Wonder Woman was really good, too. So, I mean, they've got three really good movies, and I mean, they've got more stinkers, but I mean, the last three ish, you know, I mean, maybe not the last three, but they're, they're getting it together, I think. Hopefully. Yeah. I, I, I see the the trend going up. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, which will be good to see them actually do something, you know, like they've, always, they've always been good with cartoons, like cartoon movies and stuff like that, and TV shows. Yeah, I was just going to say their streaming shows have been really taken off. People see, I haven't personally seen any of them, but a lot of people are telling me how good they are. So, man, I've been watching like, all right, everybody, like, all right, when these two shows came out, there was Umbrella Academy and Doom Patrol. Everybody was like, oh, you know, on Umbrella Academy's, you know, the show. And I watched both. And I'm still watching Doom Patrol because I like Doom Patrol way better than I did Umbrella Academy. 
Umbrella Academy, I understand, you know, it's got this hype behind it, this mystique and this, you know, aura around it. But Doom Patrol is just straight, just ungodly weirdness that it's just like, you're like, what's going on here? So you're sitting there watching, trying to figure out what's going on. And it's just like this rabbit hole that you're going down and you just keep wanting to go down because you want to know what's going on. Let me tell you, like I said, I haven't seen a TV show, but I have a handful of Doom Patrol comic books. And like, literally, that's like five. And each issue of Doom Patrol that I've read is, is a mind trip, bro. Like, it's crazy. Like, yes. It's, it's some stuff like I wasn't because part of the, it was started out part of the vertigo like, you know, like world. So it was it's a dark book. And the, the comic books I have, they, they make you think and they, they really trip you out, dude. Man, yeah, that's I don't know. That's just like I like I said, like I watched that. And I enjoy it all the time. So that's like one of the shows that I recommend that if you can find a way to watch it. If you have the streaming service or whatever, watch Doom Patrol. You'll enjoy it. You know, it's it's weird. It's, it, I mean, it's like it's weird. It's not like a kitty show. It's not, you know, it's it's violent. There's violence in it. It's weird, violent. You know, it's just like I don't know. But my favorite though, my favorite comic book show, and I don't care what anybody says, Christopher Maloney. And happy with the, the the unicorn horse thingy that's imaginary and that flies around with him and stuff, dude. If you've never read Happy, go read that book, that comic book that is hilarious. Let alone it's uh, Alan Moore, uh, and it's like the show, the show on Sci-Fi, dude. You have to watch the show because it's just so creepy, so weird, but so good. So just if you have like if. It's not a kid's show either, huh? No, it's but I was but watching. Kids, I, it, yeah, it, it's kids in it though, and it's what's funny to me. It's like there's kids in it. It's not like it starts off the first, like the whole first series starts off at Christmas time. So it's like this girl gets abducted at this uh, this guy's. Uh, it's like this uh, Pee Wee Herman kind of guy. His name's Sunny Shine, and he's doing a concert in this middle of this park. And this girl gets kidnapped by this like crazy Santa Claus looking like stalker dude and kidnapped wow, her. and like uh and her uh her mom's like you know can't find her and so like she goes to the police and you know they're like oh they do a mystery report or whatever so she goes to her ex-boyfriend which actually turns out to be like uh like uh, he used to be like a cop but now he's like a, a hitman kind of i guess and uh so he's like a, this dude that goes around just like killing people, <laughs> like, and then he's talking to this imaginary horse that's like you know her best friend, but only he can see it, and it talks to him all the time. And he's like, you know, we have to find Haley, and he's just like, you know, this dude's running around killing people, talking to an imaginary like blue unicorn with wings, and it's hilarious, dude. I was watching the last episode that was on TV. I don't know. Was, I haven't seen any. Um, episodes before but i caught like last 10 minutes maybe of the last episode and i was like oh man i, I need to like record this series <laughs> i'm telling you it's a trip dude yeah like, I, I watched it like from the first season to like right now and i've like my wife caught like uh she had never seen it and she had caught like i was watching like two episodes like two episodes ago or whatever and like right, they do it by seasons because like the first season is christmas the season they're on now is easter so it's like, and each of the kid like the first killer was a Santa Claus, and this killer was an Easter Bunny. So next season it'll be like summer or something, right? Yeah, it'll be some weird new. Yeah, it'll be some kind of weird, like Fourth of July or something like that. Who knows? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but like yeah, it's like seasons right now. So it's like it's just like this good, just like I don't know if you just like like a good violent show. It's just like with like. I don't know with animation in it. I don't know. It's like it's yeah, weird. it looked it looked pretty crazy and fun last time. A little, I mean, the little bit I caught of it, I caught ten minutes of it, and it made me want to watch more. So. Right. Yeah. So if you remember Christopher Maloney, the guy from uh, SVU, the dude clean cut. No. Uh, <laughs> if you watch that show, you'd be like, "That's the same guy." Yes, it is. So yeah, Happy is uh, actually a good show. Uh, that's another show I enjoy. Uh, 
What's the show that you like, Jeffrey? Like that you watch that's a superhero show or, or a show that you just like in general? Um, I watch like treasure hunting shows. <laughs> No, like what, like the Oak Island show? Yeah, that's the exact <laughs> one, dude. That's it. That's like my jam. That's my show right there, man. They be digging in that same hole, boy. I mean, like, <laughs> it filled yeah. up with water again. I'd be like, dang. Um, like, they, they, they tease you every episode they're going to find the treasure, and then they find, like, a coin. It's that. I'm yeah, like, and I'm sitting there like, I'm like, it's this the episode. It's going to be right here. They're going to do it. We're going to find out what's down there. Yeah, dude, I'm the same way. That's my show right there. Oh, I actually fell asleep today when we were supposed to be doing the stream watching last night's episode of the Digging Deeper or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I like this. Uh, I used to watch, uh, what's the one where they uh, where they dig for gold? That one. Gold Rush. Gold Rush. Yeah, I watch that one too every once in a while. Yeah, I used to watch that one, but. Um... But I actually like the I actually like the one where they're in the Bering Sea where they're in the water and they're underwater like and they're like in the cold and they're yeah up the, yeah dude when they're doing that it's a it's crazy there's a have you watched that uh, quite a few of those episodes have you there's the two like hillbilly brothers with the dad that's like yeah 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 kind, yeah. Of, kind of crazy he's like stealing stuff from other people and like they keep getting screwed over yeah oh yeah that's pretty crazy. Yeah, Hunter Thompson. All I watch is movies and YouTube too. That's all I like. And at first, like whenever I remember my kids would watch a lot of YouTube, and I thought that was kind of weird. And I would watch TV, and then like after a while, I started like, bef like as I got like towards getting into YouTube, I was watching more YouTube, and then it's like now it's like I wake up and put on YouTube, and it's like. I watch stuff on YouTube, and it's like I watch streaming services. Uh, you know, it's like I, I, I literally have a cable box that's just unhooked sitting in my living room that my wife was supposed to take back to the cable company. Like, oh, she keeps talking about it every week, but it's been like I'd say like two or three months. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. Like, I mean, I'm on YouTube doing shows, and so often, like, I work like freaking eight a.m. to like. Yeah, eight, so six, seven, eight o'clock. Some nights, you know, usually I'm off by six, but there's some nights that we work late and I come home and I take a shower and I eat dinner. And then I probably got a show going on. Or if I don't have a show going on, I'll sit down and relax. Uh, I put on some wrestling if there's wrestling on, or I'll watch like my treasure hunting shows, or um, I put on like WWE Network, or I'll sit there and put a uh, video game on on the Xbox, uh, or I'll watch YouTube on the Xbox. The only thing, man, I love being able to watch YouTube on the Xbox. I just wish there was some way that I could, I, you could chat on the Xbox because you can't chat. Like sometimes it makes it hard. Like I can sit there, I can watch everybody's chat, but I can't enter anything. So it's like I, I gotta be watching it, then I gotta have my phone out right here. So yeah. sometimes I'm just like and same like, thing yeah. with same thing with PlayStation. I, I can see, but I can't I'm, I, oh, man, I gotta use my phone. Hold on a second. But, right. But yeah, that's about it, man. Like, you know, it, it's hard sometimes when you're so busy, like I don't know what I want to do. Sometimes I just come home and I'm just like, ah, I just want to sit down. I'll put on like an episode of South Park or something and I'll yeah. just crash out. Like, oh yeah, that's like uh, I don't know. I've been watching like a lot of wrestling lately. And Me too. I, you know what? Like I found that I didn't know they they, they got New Japan Pro Wrestling on TV. I I didn't know they. I don't know if it's new, but I I just I just started seeing it on my cable. Um, here probably like two weeks ago, so I've been recording. They've been playing it a lot. I got like fifty different episodes already recorded. Oh, man. See, like I like watching independent stuff. Like I like watching Ring of Honor. I like Me watching too. like uh, and people's like you know Ring of. Why do you watch that? I'm like, dude, Ring of Honor has like uh, like where do you think WWE is getting their talent from? These guys and like Ring of Honor, like New Japan, Impact, those kind of shows. Those are guys who are, are still super passionate about it and you can tell are doing it for the love of it as oh, the, not the guys in wwe aren't but it's a little different there's there's a little more there you've already made it you know you're on top now you're just trying to stay there as to where these guys and like 
the independents, you know, they're, they're just trying to put on, put out every night. So, like, you, you can see it. It's a little different. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, like, the whole, like, they always complain about, like, you know, like, oh, I was watching this thing where they were saying, like, because uh, a lot of them are trying to leave. WWE and go to AE, you know, like all I keep, hear, I keep hearing that rumor. Although I've heard Cody Rhodes say that he doesn't want to just take a bunch of people from WWE to fill AEW, but I keep hearing a lot of rumors about everybody who, like, either you haven't seen in a little bit in WWE or somebody who's like upset, like, there's oh, they're li- trying to leave for AEW, trying to leave for AEW, but I'm yeah, not- well, they already showed the. Uh, uh, Dean Ambrose, which, if you don't know, if you've never seen C, uh, Oxley, C, Oxley. yeah, John Moxley, go look up CZW Wrestling. John Moxley, that dude was like a Mick Foley hardcore legend kind of dude. That dude used to bleed a lot in matches, right. and he right. came to that. He like he 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 toned it down, and like and, and like that's why I, like a lot of people were upset like when he wrestled like Brock Lesnar and stuff. They thought like it could have been a better match, and and all Brock wants to do is just throw you around, and that's all he does, you know, because he just wants to get his paycheck and go. Yeah. And so, you know, they wanted it to be like, you know, Dean using like, you know, you know, like weapons and stuff his like skills. that, you know, yeah. and it's, you know, and you know, and it's a hard, basically like a hardcore match, but a, a match match, you know, but like, you, you know, get away with what you can get away with. That's just the problem when you're wrestling Brock Lesnar. You- yeah. There's gotta, only a certain amount of stuff that he can do, you know. So that's why, like, it's always good to put him up against like Roman Reigns or one of these other big guys like Braun Strowman, because same type of guy, big, slow, just in there trying to do these power drops and bombs and stuff like that. Right. You put a technical wrestler in there with Brock Lesnar, and they've got to carry him the whole match, pretty that's much. That's why I never understood about McMahon, though. Is like he likes these big dudes, and it's like. You like these big dudes, I understand that, but like you've got guys that are like killing it. Like you've got guys like every night, just like you got Dolph Ziggler, you got The Miz, you got uh, Daniel Bryan, you got you know AJ Styles, Kofi King. These guys that are killing it, and then you're just handing out paychecks to Brock Lesnar, or you're handing out a paycheck to Goldberg. They gave Goldberg two million dollars just to do a show. Yeah, you know that's the thing. Is like. They, if they want to do something like that, my thought is they need to do the weight classes and utilize the weight classes. Like they've got 205 Live, right? Well, if they're going to do something like 205 Live, then they should put anybody who's like two or five or less in that category. Put Daniel Bryan. Or, if you want to go up, then you could be a middleweight. If you're heavier than 205, you go to the middleweights or something. And then you got like the heavyweights, which would be like 250 up. To 275 or something, and then you go and you have your heavyweights, which would be like Braun Strowman. I, I, I know they that. want the inner fighting, which would be fine, but if they want to have like a certain title, you know, like title match, put the super heavyweights, you know, championship up on Brock Lesnar, let him walk around, something like that. I don't know. See, the whole thing about like, well, my whole thing is with that is like, not not even like the weight classes or whatever, but like just like the whole. And decrement of them just like the way they have the sit like they, like McMahon keeps it to where it's like he wants it new school but he wants it still old rules yeah like he wants to pay them in old money like you know old way you know like he doesn't you know, he doesn't like like they, they get paid. Have, like medical benefits do they they get paid all right like this is how they work they get paid they're they're independent contractors they get paid. So much money, X amount of money. But in that money, they have to lot for motel, travel, food. Well, except for when they're at the actual event, because the event they cater that, you know, they'll do that. But like if they're outside of that, they have to pay for their own food or whatever. Right. So it's like, you know, you have some around, like, and there's some of them, you know, that, you know, that are making good money and some of them that are you know str- like you know struggling or whatever they say they're struggling uh, but it just depends i guess that's you know like the, on how you you manage well, your- I, I guess it depends uh, like also like on who we're talking about like a guy like brock lesnar we know is getting his due and then you take a guy like probably like Heath slater who's like struggling to stay on the roster is probably somebody who's yeah, having to pay for his room and, you know, pay for his motel rooms, his travel expenses, and Brock's getting, you know, 
limousine oh, rides and you know everything's paid for. You Everybody know. knows who Brock Lesnar is, you know, like yeah. So that's like you know the deal with why a lot of these guys are you know wanting to cut. Plus, like you know the workload, the you know they're not only doing like you know we watch Raw and SmackDown, they're doing house shows, they're doing live shows. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, you know, on top of that, they're doing those. They're doing house shows. They're doing, you know, road road travel. Yeah, they so, probably stop at just about a city every night, I bet, yeah. don't they, to do, like, a house show? Yeah. Like, so, it, it's, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Raw, SmackDown, Wednesday, they probably stop in the next city on the way to the next show, and then they stop in the next city on the next show. I bet they do at least two house shows a week, right? Oh, Probably yeah. Friday night, Saturday night, somewhere, something like that. Oh, yeah, they do. And it's like they do all that, and then, like, they have to pay for everything. And then if they – and I do think if they get hurt, they have to pay – I think they have to pay for their own stuff? Because I remember, like – Yeah, no, I know some of them do now. I don't know if that's, like, every wrestler does not have medical benefits or something like that, but I know that there's a lot that don't. Maybe some of the bigger guys might, but – I know a lot of them don't. I don't know, but like I think I think now, like before, WWE was where you wanted to go to prove that all right, I made it. I'm the man. I've done it. I climbed the mountain. I got to the top. Now it's becoming to where it's like there's WWE, there's New Japan, and then you know now they're gonna be all elite. So it's like, which is cool. So it's like you know. <laughs> And it's like if you want to make it, you don't have to just go to WWE. You can, you know, go somewhere else. And a, and a lot of and a lot of that work schedule stuff. That's why you've seen a lot of these guys going to TNA because TNA didn't really go a lot of places. TNA just kind of stayed in one spot, you know. So you just had to show up, you know, live in Florida, nice sunny weather, show up to work, do a couple of bumps, you know, get thrown out or whatever, get your paycheck, and go back to what you was doing, you know, until the next show that you got to take. Or whatever, because yeah. DNA. I'm not. I don't know if it's an internet thing or what, but over the last few years, I don't know if it's the the crowd of people who enjoy wrestling has gotten bigger. But you can people will know like you can. I don't know. You get love without having to be in WWE. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Sasha Banks is like a name that can go somewhere and probably be successful. You know what I mean? Wherever yeah. she goes. Like, and I don't know if that's a product of now the internet and we can watch all these other things and see all these other like things, but like there's just there's more out there and people I feel like are more maybe people are more accepting of the independent circuit than maybe they were at one point or another. I don't know if that's what it is or if it's just that it's more obtainable to watch, you know, but yeah, I, I think it's starting to get to that point where maybe people are just fed up with the way the WWE operates. So now, you know, they're, they're discovering these other ones or what, but I feel like if you, you want to be successful in wrestling, you don't necessarily have to go to just WWE anymore. And that's where the uh, the actual what like the young bucks and the all elite and Cody they've all proven it you know like hey I don't have to go back but you know I'm gonna make it happen here and that's you know hey what's up Matt the boy who had seven hey what's up buddy but that's like you know they they're proving that and it's like to me it's like they all right like how you said Sasha Banks is a name all right to me Kevin Steen was a name. Like, I used to love Kevin Steen matches. I used to watch, like, dude, he, him and El Generico, yeah, I they were, like, some of the best. And then, like, they, like, what happens now is, like, all right, independence to me is, like, they, like, how you said earlier, they put their hearts into it. They love, you know, they go out every night. They try to, you know, you know, steal the show, put it all out there on the mat. So, what happens is they sign this big money contract with WWE. They get to the WWE plantation farm or whatever, uh, they get thrown into the assembly line. Okay, you're gonna be a high flyer because you're little. Uh, you're a big guy, so you're gonna be maybe an intercontinental champion or something. And and, and they turn you into like no way, Jose. Like, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? like, 
Or you, Adam Rose, a rosebud or something. You know, it's like, yeah. where do you come up with these stupid ideas? Like, now Bray Wyatt's like some weirdo Mr. Rogers. Like Exactly. Like, seriously? What? Some of these things, it's just... And I think we're at that time where, like, these themed wrestlers are kind of going out of style. Like, you go, you know, like, people like The Undertaker and stuff like that. that those kinds of themes are, I don't know, I think people just want some something different. Like, I mean, like more nobody, reality to it, basically. Yeah, nobody believes in, like, you know, vampires and all that stuff. <laughs> like, we know that, like, no wrestler is really a vampire anymore. Like, I, I don't think we're at a gimmick. That's the word I'm looking for. At that point where we still need gimmicks like that. Drew Man Chew, what is up, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? No, oh, we're just talking about uh, why wrestlers are leaving uh, WWE, and is it is it like necessary to go to the WWE anymore to be you know considered a main guy? And like I say, no, I don't think that you have to go to WWE anymore to be a main guy because a lot of it is like if you look back, AJ Styles was a guy. Before he even went to WWE, and now that Styles was a big guy, and he yeah. was one of the first. Like for me, he was one of the first that was like, "Oh wow, AJ Styles!" Like you heard about him, you knew what he's doing. No matter where he was at wrestling at that point, I watched him back in TNA, you know, and uh, he he was like big in TNA. Like I felt like he was carrying TNA for a while. And oh yeah, I think he left and did some New Japan after that or something, but. Yeah, he left and went to New Japan, uh, joined the Bullet Club, and he was on there for a while. And, like, man, yeah, he was, like, the only thing that I could say that uh, they did right with him was they let him go straight to the main roster. Because if they would have put him on NXT like they did, like, Bobby Roode, or they okay. did uh, Eric Joe, Young. Like, well, they, they just let Samoa Joe, like, go through the prime of his career in NXT. Yeah, but... The thing is, he was the best he had. All right, NXT. The, NXT the, is the best show. The best show they have is NXT. If you, you don't believe me, go watch it. Go yeah, watch no, it. for sure. That match that they had a couple weeks ago between Velveteen Dream and that white surfer dude. Oh, uh, Matt the, Riddle? Yeah. Yeah, the dude, bro dude was, or whatever. That's dude. one of the best matches I've seen in a long time, bro. Yes, I'm telling you, like the Velveteen Dream. I'm, I'm, I, I like that dude. My kid likes that dude, and I'm scared that when he gets on the main roster, McMahon is gonna mess with that whole character and mess it all up. Because the way he has it set up is perfect. He does that, like every time that they have something good in NXT or an independent thing come in, and McMahon gets his hands on it, he ruins it. And then like they have, you know, they'll, you know, they'll leave, and then like you know. And McMahon's philosophy is this is McMahon. This is what he does with the like when they leave. When they leave, like you can't compete for 90 days. So there's you know, 90 days you can't wrestle, so you're not on TV, so you're getting you're getting your name thrown through the mud, you're getting clowned and all this other stuff they're doing to you before you even get off TV. Because like look what they're doing to the revival. The revival's getting clowned about, you know, oh, shaving their backs and all this other stuff and all this other goof getting Okay, my whole thing, like what are the War Raiders? They change their name like three times in a week. Yeah, and it's like because Vince McMahon why, doesn't why do they even need to change it? Like, yeah. Vince McMahon he messes up he messes up good like if you look all right, like okay, every part. So Everybody when, Braun was, Strowman, when Braun Strowman first appeared, he was the monster, you know, and he was just demolishing everything. And then they totally made him like this super like face where everybody had to love him and he had to be all nice and do all. I was just like, why? Why do you ruin a good thing? Because that's what they do, man. Like if you look, all right, everybody that's left NXT and went up so far. All right, Bobby Roode, when he was in NXT, he was the champion. The glorious thing was beautiful. The entrance. Yeah, the entrance and all that stuff. Dude. And you, he gets no TV time when he's up on the main roster now. So then you have, like, all right, that goes back to, then you look at uh, Finn Balor. Finn Balor had more demon appearances in NXT than he did on the main roster. <laughs> Like, I hate what they've done to Finn Balor to the point that I don't even enjoy watching. I want I, like, want I, don't even, I don't like his character. He all. needs to leave. He needs to leave. Ben Balor needs yeah. to leave. He needs to leave that. Matter of fact, that is going to be a show that we're going to do is 
what wrestlers need to leave WWE and go to AEW or where should they go to improve their career? I feel like they totally castrated Finn Balor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? His whole gimmick should have been this. This is how his gimmick should have went down. He should have been like, okay, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty good badass. You know, I'm a pretty, I can maintain the rock, you know, I can maintain as a champion. You know, he's a pretty good fighter, wrestler, whatever you want to call it. But when he gets beat, like, you know, say he loses and like, you know, he's like, oh, I don't think I can win. He does the demon. Then the demon wins. And then it's like, you know, okay, I'm back to Finn Balor or whatever. Or, but like, they never use the demon right, dude. They would never do it right. They, they, he came out as the demon that first match, won the title belt, and then he went away for a while. They should have kept him as the demon. I don't care. Like, even for SmackDown Raw, just, that was over. The demon was cool. Like, like I was just saying that there's a lot of gimmicks that just suck. Get rid of the gimmicks. But that was a good one. People liked that one, the demon. Yeah, all and right. When you get something like that, you need to stick with it, I think. And yeah. then they bring him out, and they castrated him. They throw him like around like he's nothing, you know. Oh, Finn Balor, the great Prince Devitt, but then you just let him get ran through by everybody. And then all of a sudden, here comes Bobby Lashley, who is a beast, who shouldn't lose to anybody. And Finn Balor all of a sudden shows up in the Demon and beats Bobby Lashley. Come on now. Bobby yeah. Lashley should be world heavyweight champion. Like, yeah. But they're not going to do that either. And it's no, like, they're not that, but and it's like, uh, like Bobby Lashley is probably the most wicked dude on in that on that roster. Like, oh, I'm still waiting to see Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar, and I got my money oh, yeah. on Bobby Lashley. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, they like I said, like there's a lot of people on those rosters that need to just cut time. Like Finn Balor, he's one that I definitely guarantee you will leave WWE after. Can you imagine if Finn Balor left, went to New Japan and rejoined the Bullet Club? Like, no, he's going to go to AEW because Bullet Club is a Well, AEW. New Japan is kind of like working with AEW. It'll probably all be like one promotion type of thing, but yeah, for sure. I mean, the Bullet Club could use that right now, too, I feel like. So they have, like, I don't know, like, that's, like, yeah, the there's going to be a lot of fluctuation between because like Rob Van Dam just showed up on Impact like four days ago, I think. Yeah, right. Drew Van Shoot, Tyler Breeze. I just heard Tyler Breeze. Uh, yeah, just went back down to NXT. Yeah, yeah, and he had a good gimmick, dude. His gimmick is good. Like yeah. the, the when he comes out with the oh, I'm a model. That was I don't, a know, I don't know about the damn boots he wears. Those kind of bug me, but like I, I enjoyed everything else about Tyler Breeze. And even when he Breezango, freaking Breezango was that was kind of funny. Like I didn't mind that. But yeah, like where it's like a where are they now kind of thing. Bundongo. Yeah, all wasted talent. That Drew Man was right. Tyler Blues. Uh, Ty yeah, Dillinger, I'll, 10. Yeah. 10. Like that dude had a cool gimmick too. 10. Like who that come on, man. Ty, uh, Ty Dillinger, like you said, Oscar. Like, they totally wasted Oscar. Oscar should have been, like, the next Goldberg, like, 36 and 0, like, this crazy oh, streak. I'll tell, you some to- I'll tell you where they dropped the ball on some totally wasted talent, and I don't care what nobody says. It was Enzo Amore and Big Cass. I don't care what you say. Them two should have been tag team champions because the mouth that he had, the pop that they would get from just that music hitting, and he would come out and start talking. Dude, that- I, wish, I wished I was Enzo when they first started showing up. Let me tell you, dude, yes. I I, I enjoyed Enzo more in Big Cass. That music, everything. And then and then and Carmella together, Carmella and like yeah. man. And it was just like, that was like a big waste of talent right there because they split them up and then had them do this stupid little feud. And I was like, they don't know what they're doing sometimes. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Who is writing this stuff? Like, I could do better than you guys. I mean, like, for real. Like, I, I could, a lot of people could, like, the way they go about it. Like, I It's like know. some of the matches they put together. It's just like, and some of the stuff was like, you know, you already know. You already know what's going to happen. Like, when you get that, you know, like, one person's talking, then they get interrupted. Then another person comes out, they get interrupted. And like, oh, that's gonna be how many people's in the ring? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. we're what? three, we're three what? over here, three over here. It's gonna be a three on three tag match. <laughs> we're watching wrestling matches of Shane McMahon versus the Miz's dad. 
Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I always have loved Shane McMahon, but like seriously, Shane McMahon versus like The Miz and his dad. Like, I, there's so much better they could do. Oh yeah, but this this is what you know they're doing with all this talent they got that they're just sitting on. And it's like they're just ruining all. That. And then, then it's like I'm wondering if they're doing it intentionally. Like they're getting all this indie talent. You know, all this. Like, look what they did to EC3. EC3 was on fire in TNA. Dude, he's one of my favorites, too. Like, I loved EC3 on TNA, man. Yeah, he was on fire in TNA. And, and, and then when he gets to NXT, he was kind of like, you know, he was – he wasn't bad, but he wasn't too good. But he still was better, you know, like – Well, that's the thing is he was on WWE before he was on TNA, and they let him walk once. And yeah. then he blew it up on TNA, and they bring him back, and they're just kind of wasting him. Yeah, they're jobbing him out and stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, really? I'm like, y'all have this guy. He could be like – Whenever he, whenever I heard that he was first signed to WWE, I was like, "Oh, they need to put him." And this is at the time when, uh, oh, who was it? It was. Uh, I was like, "They need to put him and uh, Dolph Ziggler together." That's when Dolph Ziggler was a heel. Yeah. And I was like, "That'd have been a great heel team, or either him and the Miz, and that'd have been a great heel team." You know, like give him somebody to work with until like he can go out. You know, like just run on his own and stuff. You know, but he, yeah. Well, like, this whole thing with, like, I mean, Drew McIntyre, like, Drew McIntyre is wicked, dude. What are they, like, I mean, I know he gets a lot of a spotlight now, but, like, they're, he, I think he if needs he to be a champion, man. If he doesn't win Money in the Bank, it's a travesty. If he does not win Money in the Bank. I already told you, we talked about this last week, my predictions of what's going to happen is Baron Corbin's going to win by screwing McIntyre out of it somehow is what I think yeah. is going to happen. But yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Mr. Garrell said we'll be on this chat all night. <laughs> I know, right? Well, they've had so much talent come through that door. Like, Yeah, and they squandered a lot. You know who else I really like? I feel like it's underutilized is freaking Elias, man. Like, Oh, he gets, he gets beat up all the time. That's all he he comes out, he sings a little bit, gets interrupted and beat up. But, like, you see the guy wrestle, he's freaking chiseled, he's got the charisma, like, a lot of, that's the problem with a lot of them, is they don't have the charisma, and, you know, there's just some people that have it, and he's got it, I, I don't know, like, I'd like to see more from Elias, I think he could be better. Well, see, that's like, uh, I don't know, like, a lot of, like, when they have it, WWE doesn't know what to do with it, they're just like, hmm, they try to force their own it on yeah. them, I guess. And That's like, you know, like they, you know, force Roman Reigns down everybody's throats for years. And people finally just, you know, they finally figured the niche. They were like, oh, he had leukemia. And then, like, you know, everybody loves Roman And you know Reigns. what? He comes out and still gets booed half the time. Like, yeah. So, I don't know. Like, it's, I think Roman Reigns is going to be one of the. Those things like Kurt Angle, people are probably now just going to be doing the you suck chant every time he walk type of thing. Every time he walks out, he'll just always get booed. <laughs> like John Cena. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. For sure. So, oh, you, oh, speaking of John Cena, I heard that they're uh, casting him to be King Shark in, uh, whatchamacallit, what was it? Uh, uh, suicide. Quad too, yeah. I yeah. heard something about that, yeah. So look forward to that. <laughs> Well, yeah, um, I don't know if it's still happening, but I guess The Rock is supposed to be Black Adam or something like that. And, uh, oh, yeah. well, he actually, yeah, he's going to be Black Adam. Because he produced the Shazam movie. Oh, uh, did he? Yeah, yeah, so he's going to be Black Adam, so he's got his hands in it. So I was like, all right, cool. So so we'll, right. we'll see the, I just want to see the actual confrontation, you know, between Black Adam and Shazam. That's going to be good. I want to see that. Yeah, yeah, that'll be cool. Because they do actually talk about, like, they talk about Black Adam, but they don't really, like, say his name. They just say, oh, we get, you know, they say something about, oh, we, you know, we had a champion, and, and then, like, you know, he turned or whatever. So, yeah, I'm assuming they'll bring him back in some form of uh, capacity of, like, a hero, good guy, right? Because they're going to want to, like, make more than one movie with the Rock in it. I'd, I'd assume they'd want to take advantage of that as much as possible. So, I don't know. That's just my thoughts, right? You get The Rock in one of your movies, and you need to turn that into like a Fast and the Furious franchise to make some money. 
Mm-hmm. You still ain't seen Shazam? Come on, man. I know you've seen it. Uh, you seen Endgame twice, haven't you? <laughs> That's right. Uh, don't feel bad. I haven't seen it yet either. Yeah, that was good. I know it is. Like I know it is. I had no choice. I had no choice. I, I dude, I could tell from the the previews that movie is gonna be good. Everybody says it's good. I just, I don't know. Just haven't made it down there. I, it's one of those things that always slips my mind. I don't think about it, but yeah. Oh, how did the rock get so big? Because all the millions and millions. <laughs> Well, not because to me, the, all right, this is like this is what we're talking about the it thing. All right, the it thing is like The Rock had it, Stone Cold had it. Like, it is a thing where it's like Jericho had some of it. And he came in at the right time. Let's face it, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just getting a little too old to be that big buff action hero guy. And the yep. next biggest, buffest dude was The Rock, and with all his skill in wrestling, and I guess his charisma, it just worked out really well for him. Because let's face it, John Cena's tried, and, you know, John Cena hasn't been a failure, but he's definitely not on the level of The Rock. Like, Triple H tried it, it didn't happen. What was he, Daddy Daycare or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even Hulk Hogan tried back in the day, and it didn't really work that well. So, it it, it definitely does take a a certain person, because not everybody can do that. That's like uh, I was watching. What movie was that? Oh, what a rock movie! No, the John Cena movie. He was in King Kong, right? That King Kong Treasure Skull Island or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That was I liked that one. I thought that one was good. No, he was in was it Rampage? Like Rampage? He was in Rampage. Yeah, Rampage was. Yeah. I actually liked Rampage. I thought that was pretty. Yeah, Rampage good. was good. So yeah. It's just like, yeah, the it thing is like you have to have it. And if you don't have it, like they, like it's, and then it's like sometimes you have it and WWE doesn't know what to do with it. Cause like look at Bret, Bret Hart. He had it, but they didn't know what to do with it. Like they didn't want it, I guess. They screwed him over. So, you know, that was just one of them deals. But uh, uh, another dude that had it that they didn't know what to do with was uh, Mr. Kennedy, King Kennedy. Yeah, right. Dude was yeah. great on the mic. Yeah, um, then they were doing that whole, um, he's like Vince's son and all that stuff. And then he went over to TNA, and he did good in TNA, too, for a while. Yep. He did, I don't know. They, they, like, when they have a good gimmick, they change. Like, I don't know why they changed Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's gimmick was cool. Bray Wyatt could have been the next Undertaker, like, to step in for the Undertaker, like, the next person. Yeah, I agree. And, like. And they just screwed it all up. They just like first they took away the Wyatt family from him. Oh man, that was so good. The Wyatt family. Yeah. When Harper and Rowan first showed up in those masks, they never should have took the masks off them. They should have just let told them to leave the masks yeah. off. Yeah. Let them be. Let that be their characters and just roll with that. That was perfect. Yeah, and it was like like it was just like creepy, like you know, yeah. like and it was just like a good. Like that was like one of the best, and this is like that was there's a Finn Balor, total Finn Balor like type of thing because then they just threw Bray Wyatt out there and they just let everybody beat him. Yeah, how can you be this crazy like scary demon creature type thing and everybody's beaten? And nobody remembers that Bray Wyatt was a WWE champion. <laughs> he also came up NXT, you know, Husky, yeah, Harris, all that stuff. Like, yep. Husky Harris, I remember that. Yeah. And now they got him in this lame gimmick. Oh, dude. I don't know what's worse is the theme song or the whole act. Oh, oh man. Remember they tried to push Ryback on us? Do you remember Ryback? Yes. Like, yeah. Dude, they, they took like the worst wrestler out of NXT, like that thing, but and tried to force him down our throats because he was big and buff. Like crazy. Yeah. That was it. Oh, yeah. Later, Matt. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. Oh, yeah, Matt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, WWE, like, I I enjoy them and I watch them, but there's some things that I I question highly about what they do, just storyline-wise and the way they utilize their characters. Oh, yeah. Thunder in Paradise. That was not amazing, Mr. Garrow. Oh, I I love Thunder in Paradise. That was a great show. Yeah. 
Uh, I like Santa with muscles better than that. Thunder in Paradise was great. That boat and everything, that was cool. They were like, I used to like that show. That was like the one Hulk Hogan show I actually enjoyed. <laughs> That's funny. Thunder in Paradise. Yep, and that was the name of their, their uh, WCW show, Thunder. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, guys, we're going to call it a night. Uh, we'll yeah. be, uh, I'll be on tomorrow with the uh, What's Your Grills. With, oh, yeah. uh, Who's your guest? Uh, Caleb's uh, Comic Smurf. Nice, nice. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, you got anything going on, Jeff? Uh, not tomorrow. I need to take the day off, I think, and take a nap. <laughs> or something. I got to work. And then on Friday, uh, me and Tony are going to be on the Comic Core on Friday, right before the hunt. So you can catch us on the Comic Core Friday and then the hunt right after that on Tony Sanders' channel. All right. We'll catch y'all later, guys. Thanks for staying up late with us. Yeah, have a good night. Thank